think it's I think it's seven o'clock on TV time at least. <laughs> Happy New Year! Welcome everyone uh, to the New Year. Uh, we'll call the order of the Board of Zoning Board of Appeals. I'll let everyone know the board does not write zoning ordinance, but does have the authority to grant relief where practical difficulty or unnecessary hardship would result. The board will vote on each agenda item following a public hearing. Use variance requests require a minimum of six affirmative votes in order to grant the request variances. Non-use variance requests require a minimum of five affirmative votes in order to grant variances. Uh, please note right now we are down two board members, um, so we only have seven board members. Even though it looks like we have a full lot up here, there's actually only seven of us are the board members. So uh, please note that any order any order of the board is valid for a period of one year. If you'd like to request that the board table or during your case due to the absence of full board, you must inform the chairperson immediately after the public hearing. Petitioners shall do their best to limit presentations to 10 minutes. Each participant in a public hearing shall do their best to limit comments to three minutes. All right, as stated, we're down two board members, but we do have a new person. So uh, Mr. Isaac Wolf, if you'd like to say a few words or introduce yourself. Thank you so much. Um, it's great to be here. My name is Isaac Wolf. I will be a Royal Oak resident of five years in uh, May. So May of 2019 is when I moved to the city. Um, I own a house here. I love it here and I'm honored to be here. So I'm a uh, planner by trade. So I know a lot of what you guys are going through because I've been on your side of the house. And uh, with that, I'm gonna you know, just say thank you again for being here. Thank you. Welcome. All right, uh, approval of minutes for December 14th, 2023. Is there any amendments? If not, motion to uh, approve them. Mr. Reddy. I move that we approve the minutes. Is there a second? Mr. Moore raised his hand first. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. Uh, there is no unfinished business from last year, so we will go on to new business, case number 24-01-01. Whenever you are ready, Mr. Murphy. The subject property is located on the east side of Woodward Avenue between Chester and Hunter, and there's a new Shell's convenience station and fuel pumps that the building was constructed and finished in 2017. There are 12 fuel pumps and the building is just shy of 7,000 square feet of usable floor area. It has a convenience store that sells alcohol and there are two carry out restaurants inside. All of the uses on the site currently require 35 parking spaces and the approved site plan or as the site is now provides 39 parking spaces so they conform to the number of required parking spaces. At the November Planning Commission meeting, the Planning Commission did approve the construction of a separate building on the south side of the property adjacent to the Chester Road right away. And that's for a Tim Hortons fast food restaurant. It has a walk-up window and it also obviously has a drive-through window. It does not have any interior customer seating. The inside of the building is exclusively for employees only. That building is 600 and has 647 square feet of usable floor area. So it requires by itself four parking spaces. Obviously in order to accommodate that building where uh, on the site currently there are parking spaces. So those parking spaces are, some of them are eliminated uh, to make arrangements for the placement of the building, drive aisles, et cetera. The site, as approved recently by the Planning Commission, provides 27 parking spaces. So the existing convenience store plus now the carryout restaurant requires 39 parking spaces. So they're deficient and they're seeking a variance of 12 parking spaces. Okay. The approved design requires the use of the adjacent alleys for vehicles to stack or queue in line for service at that drive-through window. And the zoning ordinance actually has a language in it that strictly prohibits stacking spaces from occupying or extending into a street or an alley. So they're seeking a waiver of that prohibition. 
and the zoning ordinance does require a dedicated and continuous escape lane that's directly adjacent to the stacking lane. And the purpose of the escape lane is to allow drivers the ability to bypass those waiting for service at the point of the window. Uh, it allows continuous traffic flow on site. And so the approved design doesn't provide for an adjacent escape lane. Uh, the petitioner has addressed in their letter how they believe that uh, the design of the site functions to have an escape lane. So you, that was noted in their letter and you can also, they'll also elaborate that when they come forward. And they are seeking a variance to waive that dedicated and continuous escape lane that's directly adjacent to the stacking lane. If approved tonight, the petitioner would proceed forward to the city commission in order to have a modified license agreement in order to use the public alley for uh, stacking spaces, menu boards, landscaping, screening walls, and also the reconfiguration of the alley at Chester. And I think we can get into some of the conversation as to why the planning commission required the petitioner to redesign the configuration of the alley at Chester uh, when the petitioner steps forward and we continue to have a conversation about how the site functions, despite the fact that it doesn't have that continuous dedicated escape lane and it's using the alley for uh, these required stacking spaces. Um, real quick, I just noticed that we lost connection to up there, so I don't know if they lost us or Flashing. not. Yeah, lost for a minute. I don't know if that matters or if we should hold off for a minute and see if they reconnect. Let's make a phone call. Oh, it's back. Hey, we're back. There we go. The man behind the curtain fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> Wizard of Oz. All right. Any questions? We'll see what else he's able to fix tonight. Any questions for staff? Uh, we had a couple over here. Go ahead. Nancy, I just was curious, how many like in that pl place where there's going to be no escape lane? How many car how many cars will be like kind of stuck in that no escape lane area? Sure, maybe we can zoom in a little tighter on that, and it'll illustrate that there are four spaces. Okay. So I, I referenced the. We'll get to the conversation about the reconfiguration of the driveway. I think now is the appropriate time. The original design that was taken to the planning commission showed that alleyway being closed. And the Planning Commission required that it be reconfigured so that it's narrower and that it only turn westward toward Woodward Avenue. And, and their thought behind that is that if someone's waiting, uh, at some point they'll have the ability to flow out of the site. I will have on Chester Avenue two signs that say do not enter so that it's known that that's not the way to get into the drive through, uh, the, to the drive through facility. Yeah, totally, yeah, yeah. yeah, so it's sort of like a little offshoot, but it's not a continuous, dedicated, and adjacent escape, escape lane. There are four stacking spaces that can be accommodated in the alley before they make that turn to then go toward the building at, to the point of the service window. Yeah. Thank Clark. you. Uh, Mr. Murphy, I, I believe I know the answer, but can they not use the 12 spaces at the pumps as part of the parking or towards a portion of the parking? That's correct. That's correct. I mean, I, I frequent this site quite a bit, and it seems I, I either park adjacent to the building or at the pumps, and I think 90% of the customers do too. I don't think anyone ever parks out to the south. So just to, but they can't use that towards any of their parking? Well, it, it's not. Uh, separate in the sense that uh, someone could park there sure, and just walk, and walk into either of these facilities and not get any fuel at the, at the pump. Uh, but you're right, most logically, mm -hmm. most people get their fuel and then go inside the building to pick up whatever odds and ends they might need. Thank you. Mr. Reddy. Um, okay. <laughs> Uh, my question was, is the alley considered uh, part of the property, um, the petitioner's property, or is it considered city? It's still a city, open city alley. Okay. Uh, they'll, they would simply be looking for a license agreement to allow for it to function as their stacking spaces, but it would still technically be open. So that 
That is certainly a requirement in order to allow things like the fire apparatus and emergency vehicles, uh, delivery vehicles, refuse pickup, uh, to be able to use it when they're off hours and vehicles aren't stacked there. Uh, I'll let the petitioners speak to, to some of the logic, but uh, all of the sites on Woodward Avenue are fairly shallow. They don't have a lot of depth. And in order to site the building on the property and get the appropriate turning radius and the number of stacking spaces, uh, obviously their logic in, in wanting to request a license agreement to use the alley for stack, <coughs> stacking spaces is that it allows for them to have more vehicles on their site than vehicles backing up onto Woodward Avenue, which you might see in other more popular drive-through facilities in the area. So they can speak to that, but I believe that's a lot of the logic associated with it is to, yes, we know we're gonna be busy, we're, we plan on having fast service, and in order to accommodate the design to allow for enough vehicles not to back up onto Woodward, this is the design that was uh, bought up. Uh, just one, I guess I had a similar question, more of an observation. I think I studied every alley along Woodward today, <laughs> and, and, and most of them appear to be like original concrete or a decent shape or somewhat broken up, but this alley is pristine. So it looks like they put a sub substantial investment when they initially built out this property. It looks like it's, it's new asphalt and well-maintained. So it looks like they, they put some money into this alley, that's for sure. I'm sure they'd be happy to express the dollar amount and time <laughs> and commitment, and they also did install at the time that they were approved for this the building and the fuel pumps they were required to put in a masonry screening wall on the opposite side of the alley so they did pay for that as well this site was previously a filling station that had uh, site contamination and the petitioner came forward to the brownfield redevelopment authority and worked to clean up the site to construct what is there today thank you mr wolf <clears throat> So I'm assuming that any emergency response or anything like that can go, quote unquote, the wrong way in if, if need be, or how would they get to the site if there are four cars there? Mm -hmm. we, did, we did certainly uh, show the design to the fire department and the police department and the Department of Public Service, and neither... Uh, none of the offices had any objection to the design. There is the central drive aisle off of Woodward Avenue that allows vehicles to come into the site and then we'll say split and go either north or south when they get to the alley. And then obviously there's a 20 foot wide drive uh, off of Chester, uh, Hunter, off of Hunter. So that does allow for vehicles to, to come down the alley. But they didn't have any objection to the design to slightly narrow the entrance off of Chester uh, they felt as though they would still be able to get in if they if they needed to. Okay, that's good to know. Thanks. Yes. Any other questions? All right. Seeing none, the petitioner may come forward and present your case. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, I'm Dennis Cowan with Plunka Cooney, and I'm representing the petitioner this evening. And... Uh, First of all, Happy New Year to all of you. Uh, and Mr. Wolf, welcome to the team. Um, so we do have with us, uh, we brought the whole team tonight, our team, uh, the principals, uh, Leif Kassab and Ken Lucia. Uh, if you ever go there, you'll see Ken. He's always behind the counter. <laughs> I think he lives there. Uh, and uh, then uh, Rafael Putris is our contractor and Scott uh, Tuziant is from Boss Engineering, and he was responsible for the outlay and, and the positioning of the building and things of that nature. So, uh, uh, Mr. Murphy stole a little bit of my thunder, so if I repeat some of the things he said, because uh, in my mind I had a, a, a way to present, but here's what's the most important thing. First of all, as has been mentioned, it's been open since 2017. It was a contaminated site. The owner did step up and uh, develop a brownfield and did clean up the site, which is a very positive thing for the city. This proposal is very unique. This will be the first of its kind, Tim Horton's single, what I call mini drive-through of 650 square feet. There are some that are in process of being planned. There's only actually a couple up in the country. Um, there are many in Canada because 
If you don't know, I remember Tim Horton was a hockey player for the Toronto Maple Leafs in the uh, late 50s and early 60s. He was a, a, a heck of a defenseman, quite frankly, and then got into the coffee business. Um, so as a result, because of the size, uh, one thing we want to make absolutely clear, this will be a limited menu. It's basically going to be coffee, beverages, and donuts, and some egg-type sandwiches in the morning. It's, if you go to the Tim Hortons in Royal Oak, like on 11 Mile, they have a real broad menu, sandwiches, all kinds of things. That's not going to be here. It's going to be very limited. Uh, and as a result, that's to keep things moving. And part of what keeps thing, things moving today and is going to be utilized by this <laughs> site will be the mobile ordering and pickup. That's become something that's very popular, especially among coffee drinkers. If you go anywhere on Woodward, whether it's Starbucks, Dunkin', whatever, there's a lot of people walking in and their order's already ready for them. Uh, so that platform is very important and that will be utilized here to, to keep the vehicles moving. So. Um, the other issue that you should know about is, you know, because the question came up of planning, well, why don't you just put, put it inside? In the post-COVID world, all fast food, all coffee is demanding and requiring to have a, um, um, uh, a drive-through facility. The, you will see some, those are what we call legacy facilities, that they, they were done 10 years ago or whatever. But as you may recall, in COVID, um, the only lifeline a lot of us had to, to food was through the drive-through <laughs> because the, the inside of buildings were shut down. You couldn't, you couldn't go in or anything. So, so uh, as an investment and, and, and really practical operational strategy, they're all requiring that. So that gives you the opportunity in the creation of kind of this mini concept for at gas stations that have the room, filling stations and other places that have the room. So we were very pleased to go before the Planning Commission not too long ago in November and received a five to one approval. Um, and as Mr. Murphy mentioned, the Planning Commission came up with what we agree was an excellent idea of not closing off Chester and of uh, using <laughs> that, utilizing that for uh, an escape lane exit only. I do, I think it should be said that that alleyway is an escape lane today. People drive out of there, uh, go uh, north or south. Um, sometimes uh, it may, might be uh, for various reasons. Some of them live in the neighborhood and want to go back to where they live on Chester or um, uh, I'm forgetting the street name all Hunter. of a sudden. Hunter. Pardon me? Hunter. Hunter, yes, I should know that from the from the gas station. I mean, I mean, not the gas station from the from the uh, uh, dry, uh, the car wash when we did that. But in any event, uh, it's an escape line today. It's a it, it cars come and go uh, on on both sides of the street today, uh, but mostly exit, uh, and that it's really not an entrance way if if you sat there for any period of time and watched. So let's talk a little bit about the the, the variances. I'm going to take them in two buckets: the parking. And then stacking and escape because they're kind of they're kind of related. So the parking, uh, we did need to have a change due to the configuration of the new facility on the southern part of the site. So we believe we have adequate parking at the 27 spaces. If you go to the site on a regular basis, you'll see that the parking um, there's generally a number of spots open at any given time of the day. So it's not like there's a big demand on parking. And the good thing about it is that this business, this, this convenience store, Barrels and Vines, and um, the service station aspect of it, uh, we're all one block. It's all under common ownership. And so will this uh, facility that Tim Hortons will also be belong to the owners. So it'll all be coordinated and we won't have businesses adversely impacting one another through lack of parking. Um, as has been noted, and I must say I do it myself, there are 12 spots at the gas pumps, and those do function as parking spaces. If you sat there for any period of time, you'd see Dennis Cowan and his son Danny leave after we gas up and go in and get a pop and a bag of chips or something. So uh, that happens on a regular basis. So functionally, if you, 27 and 12, as a functional matter, not an a, a ordinance matter, we have 39 spaces. So. 
The turnaround time also at gas stations at sites is pretty quick. The only people who stay longer than, you know, five to seven minutes are re at, the, at the gas station and convenience store are really people uh, who may be vendors or something of that nature. You don't have a lot of uh, uh, folks lining up and staying there for a half hour or an hour or anything of that nature. Now, as to the standing, uh, stacking and escape lines. So this was generated by the location of the building, and the building is in a very specific uh, place for a very specific reason. It could not be built really anywhere else because on that southern side is both the gas tanks, the gas tank apparatus, <coughs> and the underground detention station. And, or, or, and the engineering department, first for safety purposes, you don't want to build over gas tanks and underwater detention station. Uh, but also uh, the engineering department made it very clear in their review that we, it, you couldn't build any structure over those facilities. So as a result, the only logical place really to put the building is where it is located. Um, and that will avoid any conflict with those f underground facilities. We're actually using only a partial uh, part of the alley. We're not using the full alley. That's not the intention at all. As has been mentioned, about four stacking spaces will go in. It's that, that takes up about 90 feet. And then there's another 40 feet. Um, to the sidewalk, so we're using about 100, approximately 130 feet for the stacking spaces in the <coughs> escape lane. The escape lane, clearly, that is the logical place for the escape lane. Even if we had more room, you would not build another curb cut and a separate escape lane. You'd use the alley, and that's exactly what happens. Like at Arby's is, is definitely one of those. And in a lot of different places, uh, Arby's, McDonald's, the Burger King, not too far away, uh, the two car washes, both Tommy's and Jack's, and Starbucks even, a little farther south. And I hesitate to say Starbucks because we're all concerned about the stacking, but I'll get to that in a point. All those businesses I've mentioned have either had alleys closed, vacated, or they are used. So the city, um, I wouldn't say it's a written policy, but clearly, uh, in very many vicinities, they work with business owners to utilize the alleys instead of, they're, they're not, a, you know, alleys aren't standalones. They function uh, not only for purposes of uh, escape lanes and stacking spaces, but they also function in between many of our places on Woodward or businesses have parking lots in the back, and that's the connector. So uh, they do serve an important function. I might, I might add that um, in this instance, uh, our client did improve the alley at its own cost and expense. I believe on the original, on both the site plans, the original and the last one we uh, submitted, obviously, even though it isn't part of the property, it was included in the site plan uh, and in the discussion with the planning commission. So uh, another important feature, and this kind of was a benefit of putting the building where it is, is that we end up if you count all the way down from that center entrance or center driveway, uh, we have room for 16 stacking spaces. So I can say affirmatively, we will not be Starbucks. Uh, there's no way that's gonna be able to happen. And we have a whole different model in terms of the coffee service and everything. As you know, Starbucks um, has a much more broader menu and Everybody likes to have a special, I like to joke, a, a mocha joka, loco, whatever, <laughs> with two shots of espresso and no whipped cream. So whatever. And that's why it takes so long at Starbucks is because everybody has their own unique order that they want to have. And that's good. That's part of their business model. So uh, we don't have any construction in the alleyway. We're not um, affecting ingress or egress, except of course that they'll just be uh, exiting onto Chester Road. The alleys can still be fully used, uh, especially like was mentioned for emergency vehicles, and we're not impacting any local businesses. So that's what you need to know in terms of the variance. There is another issue I want to talk to you about because it's very important to my client and it is in part a driver of why they want to do this. Uh, they have had a issue in the last four years that they have worked very closely with the Royal Oak Police Department and they want to publicly acknowledge the police department's assistance. We have been, this property has been a victim of what I call cruise invaders. I don't want to call them cruisers because they don't have 
cars from the 50s and 60s and what we consider the classic vehicles. These are more modern, souped up cars. And as you can see, these are representative pictures of what happens many times from March through October. And I know you can say, well, how could this happen in Royal? How could somebody be allowed to do this? Well, there's a little game that gets played. First of all, what these folks do is they go on Facebook and they have a little, you know, uh, they have friends and they say, hey, we're going to meet at Shell Station on Woodward at 2 o'clock. And <coughs> they come. And they, we've used all kinds of ways. Uh, the, first, we gave the police department power of attorney so they could ticket vehicles. We put up signs. We tried to close off the parking. We put security guards, and they almost had some confrontation, so that wasn't a good thing. So we couldn't do that. Um, the police department instead has been tried to be very vigilant in coming out whenever there's a call either from, uh, from, from the business, from neighbors, because here's where the neighbors get adversely impacted by this. When some of these folks can't find a space or they think it's too crowded, what do they do? They go around the block and they race down the block, they rev up their engines and then they come around, let's say they come down Chester, they can't get in, they go down to the end of the block, whip around down the next street and they try to find a place to get in. So this has been extremely frustrating. It is clearly disadvantageous to the business. Um, they've even blocked um, uh, you know, the pumps and it's become a huge problem. So in discussions with the police department, and, and this is not their idea, but they said, well, what if, is there something else you could do on the property that would create, not make this such an attractive nuisance? Because what the attraction is, is we've got this big parking lot there. So this is what, and our client looked at a lot of different things. As you may recall, there used to be pumpkins and Christmas trees and all kinds of things for sale in that lot. And that really wasn't an option. They wanted to follow a kind of a seasonality thing. They wanted to do something a little bit more permanent. So what I'm trying to tell you is I want to assure you a lot of thought went into this for not only the business model and making this work, being aware we wanted to maximize the parking spaces, but also this problem we've been having with these cruise invaders. And we, um, what, I, what I put on your, your in front of you, I also sent in, but I didn't get it till Wednesday, so I didn't know if you saw it. And it's, it's quite stunning. Um, that's the police responses over the last four years. And you'll see a marked increase in what they're called is dream cruise extra check. And I actually talked to two of the lieutenants on the police department. What that means is either there was a call from the business, a call from a neighbor, or a self-initiated police stop. Those represent stops where cruisers, police cruisers went to the business. Now, it could be something like this. It could be something a little smaller. And those calls in the last two years are over 500. And quite frankly, even I was a little stunned. I know uh, they, both Ken and, and Laith have told me, the police are here all the time, we're sorry. But in the summertime, when, when, especially on the weekends, when these folks have uh, idle time, so to speak, um, this is what's happened. So. We believe, and in talking to the police department, they believe also that this should work because what will happen is if they try to pull this, they're going to be blocking ingress and egress. They're going to be blocking people, uh, the, the, the uh, exit lane. Th this could not happen. Then they have full, uh, uh, our full permission. Uh, they can go ticket and they can tow. Uh, the problem we've had is some of these folks are a little cute and they'll run in and they'll park their car and then they'll run in and buy a bag of chips and, well, I'm a customer. Uh, I'm not kidding. And they'll say this right up to the police officers. And the, you know, the, the, the police officers in Royal Oak, they try not to be confrontational unless they need to. And we appreciate everything they've done, but we still ended up with this mess from time to time. So we believe this, uh, this is kind of like land use serving a public purpose <laughs> or a, uh, an additional purpose. And that would be that we're convinced that doing this will finally get rid of the cruise invaders and they'll go somewhere else along the Woodward corridor. Apparently there's a, a couple spots on Woodward because stop and think about it. The police created this own special code, Dream Cruise Extra Check, to represent these visits that they have to make because of this, of this problem. So 
Um, that's my presentation. We got our full team here. If you have any questions, I appreciate you listening. I know it was a little longer than usual, but there was a lot to tell besides the just the straight variances. It's the reason why we are doing this in the first place. Do we have any questions for the petitioner? Mr. Reddy. I have a few, so anyone feel free to jump in if you want to <laughs> interrupt me here. So I have a, so I have a few. Uh, do you want me to just give them all first? Or go no, why don't we go one by one, and okay. whoever on the team can answer it best, that's who's going to come up and answer your question. Okay, so I guess the, the first one is um, I think it's pretty clear there's a practical difficulty due to these cruisers and the excess uh, parking capacity. I've been multiple times. There's always a lot more parking available than is needed. Um, the question I have is, could you give go into more detail about what other possible alternatives? Because um, the difficulty I'm having a little bit is, yes, there's a difficulty, but is a drive-through really the only option to address that? Because um, you know it is requiring three variances. So um, it's requiring what? It's requiring three variances, right? Right. So right. ideally there would be a, a solution that involved less, because we're supposed to get, you know, a lesser relaxation right. whenever possible. Right. So uh, that was that's the first question, I guess. Okay, well, I think, uh, and, and that's a good question, and we believe that, we, we kind of believe we have two, because the stacking and escape lanes are kind of tied together, but that's okay, they are, they are independent. No, I think that, um, in fact, I'm gonna just refer, uh, to my my letter, but the, um, the the primary issue here is that we did look at alternatives, and like I said, as a practical matter, a business operational matter, the the the, the national brands for coffee don't want to be inside, and limit themselves to that because of COVID, and who knows what else will come in the future. So that was the the practical effect. We could have had a bigger sized building, and we did look at that. Um, but it was determined that the best was this mini concept. So we, that way we, we, do, we actually could have had room to do some other things and much larger, but we downsized it in order to more fit what we felt was a good fit for the property. But the other thing is, and I think you really have to take this into account, we do not want to have a repeat of the Starbucks situation. And you're only required under the ordinance to have eight stacking spaces. I can't totally blame Starbucks, uh, you know, now, now with Chick-fil-A, if you had a Chick-fil-A today, they know they're going to be stacked. They, they know they're going to need 40 stacking spaces, so they, they get a big uh, footprint. But here, we wanted to maximize the number of stacking spaces, and that oh. is really what is, is at the heart of using that portion of the alleyway, because we did not want to, you know, there, is it possible we could have reconfigured this to be smaller? Yes, but it, we'd have barely enough, we'd have barely the number of stacking spaces, and it would be a very contorted kind of layout and circulation, which we felt was not safe. Okay, yeah, but uh, I guess what I'm wondering is, does it have to be a drive-through? Like, we've had a number of people come to us wanting to open, say, a ghost kitchen, where, and this seems like this would be a perfect spot for it, easy access in and out, it would take up some space, and, um, you know, I, it just seems like there are other business possibilities besides a drive-through yeah. that could offer the same solution. Yeah, I, I think given the Woodward location and the fact that there's 60,000 cars a day going by, I think to do anything but a drive-through would probably be very difficult. And you've probably seen all the businesses that have you know, opened recently, um, many of them have drive-throughs. Um, and so, and, and, I mean, even drug stores have drive throughs yeah. <laughs> you know. But I mean, uh, yeah. I think at the Planning Commission, you said the existing store is doing well without a drive through right? Uh, well, the, co the coffee service is a little weak, right? You don't sell as much coffee. <laughs> they, no, they don't sell anywhere near as much coffee. I mean, the, okay. that's just not a, not a big deal. People like the, they like the national brands, quite frankly, yeah. But, okay. no, uh, so you're suggesting that could this have been a, a small restaurant. Well, I'm just asking what else was considered and what well, reasons well, we, were there. Well, we considered a, a larger building, which would have had yeah. more sit-down and would have had sit-down service, but at the end of the day, it would have been a very contorted and tortured layout and just didn't think that was going to work. Did you look at any, was there anything else you looked at other than any other? No. And, and really to do a, a small just walk-up restaurant or, or if you want to do a, a ice cream store or something like that, um, in that kind of 
location that we have. We just didn't think that would, would work there. Uh, if you look at the ice cream stores that like we have on Woodward, um, those are drive up and people, there's plenty of parking and everything like that. So that just didn't, this just didn't seem to be the place. At a gas station, you know, people are looking for certain kind of foods. One of them is coffee, you know, and beverages. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other item I had was you quoted um, Section 5.1 of the master plan uh, in your written response regarding converting right. to alleys. Uh, but you only quoted the heading, so I just want to read uh, what's underneath. So it's 5.1b, establish alternative design treatments of existing alleys typically located between residential and commercial or office uses. The first bullet is attempt to create more space for screening of autom automobile services, parking areas, and storage areas through the use of fences, walls, and landscaping. And the second bullet is use alleys as second access to buildings providing parking and pedestrian ways through the use of the alleyscape and courtyard amenities, such as paving, landscaping, lighting, and street furniture. And the reason I bring that up is I have found these alleys um, to be very useful for bicycling because it's difficult to bicycle along Woodward, um, in my opinion, and I think other people have too. So um, I guess, you know, that to me, um, that's why I'm wondering, it, it seems like it's not the least possible thing to just close off an alley for the right of public right of way like that. Well, we're, we're not, originally we did we did propose to close it off. It's not closed off now, it'll be an extra. Well, but it'll be occupied by, try it it'll be occupied by yeah. cars. Well, yeah, but, but the turn, the turnaround, if, if, if a bike comes through the alley, they can still get through. There's not gonna yeah. be a problem there. Um, and I mean, down in Ferndale, they're putting the bikes on, on Woodward. I'm not sure that's a good idea, but uh, that's Ferndale. Um, but I think if, if, the, if you look at it, what I was trying to illustrate is that the city anticipates usage of alleys, and it can be used for a number of purposes. And in practice, that's what's happened. All the businesses I've named are businesses where alleys are part of their business now, whether yeah. vacations, whether the, the city gave up the property, whether they bought the property, the, the alleyway, however it occurred, uh, or uh, there is some kind of usage along the degree we're talking about. For instance, Tommy's, the drive, I mean the, uh, get, uh, the, uh, the uh, car wash, their escape lane actually dumps into the alley. Yeah, and but, comes uh, out but the alley's clear right. there. So you know, that, that's a good use of, yeah. that's a good example of just keeping the alley in place as an escape right. lane. Right, um, right. But I think part of what it was is that we're still trying to dissuade people from, I think with the planning commission and some of the comments we got is, okay, if this will be an escape lane, we'd like to dissuade people from going going into the neighborhood on Chester and we're gonna kind of channel it a little yeah. bit. That's, no, no, I, I that's what they were trying to, yeah. trying to help us do. I get yeah. it. Uh, I just wanted to ask. Sure. I heard those things. Um, then the last, these are just kind of more curiosity. I mean, I'm, sh I'm sure this has been looked at. The fuel, this isn't gonna affect how the fuel tankers load or unload? No, the fuel tanks will load the same way. No, they, no, and they come, they come, they come, they, they normally come after hours. Okay. You know, at a later time, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, There's a diagram. What's that? There's a, There's a diagram in there. There we go. Oh, it's, that's what that was? I didn't yeah. know that as well. Okay. Yeah. There's one for the trash truck, too. Yeah. Okay, nice. Um, then the last one was, uh, at a lot of drive throughs sometimes they'll ask you to pull up if they don't, uh, if they're not ready. Has, is there a spot designated on the map where that would happen? Well, there's the parking spaces right adjacent to the... Right, so yeah. is it probably right, right up there? Okay. Yeah, oh, that are right across from it. There's six spaces right yeah. there. Do you okay. know what you're talking about? That sometimes they tell you well, to, to be honest with you, we really anticipate, because of the limited menu, and it's mostly just the coffee and a donut, <clears> that type of thing, but it will be most of the uh, folks, or perhaps they're picking up an order. We, we, we don't anticipate that. Okay. Um, in fact, they're going to try not to do that. Right. So we can maximize parking spaces. That was it. Thank, thank you. you for your question. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate it. You always got good questions. All right. I think yes. I saw. Yeah. 
Miss Robinson. Um, my my pretty well. I guess because we we're just looking at this where the fuel trucks come in. Right. Where where about like where are the underground tanks? And you also said that there was. A I'm going to have to have Scott give us kind of an oh, idea of where those system. tanks and the de and the detention. Yeah, that's a yeah. like sewer water right. detention. Yeah. Is that what that's for? Rainwater or sewer or whatever? Yeah. So if you don't mind going back to even that circulation plan that you just had up would be would be adequate or the site plan. The sheet would be fine as well. So the the darker uh, cylindrical line that you see in the landscape <laughs> island, uh, what's you know above those six parking spaces, okay, uh, that is the underground fuel storage. That's they, they they start putting the gas in. That there. That is correct. Okay. That is correct. So uh, that actually came into uh, uh, came into play quite a bit in trying to configure the site layout uh, from a circulation perspective uh, because we needed to maintain access to it. You know, although the, the fueling uh, does occur after hours, you still need to anticipate uh, that circulation uh, within the site. You can't change it either. I mean, that's there. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. And so then, does that mean all that gray area, the darker gray in the picture, is that all kind of the underground area that you really don't want to build on, or is that? Sure. So the darker gray you see in there, that is the that would be new asphalt surface. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, uh, there's actually a reduction in total asphalt surface mm -hmm. on the site uh, if this uh, project goes through and gets developed. Um, so what you see as, as the darker gray would be the new asphalt. The underground storage system. Uh, it's, it's not demarcated on this particular sheet, uh, but it's a 35 by roughly, I think, 60 uh, footprint. And it does uh, happen in, let's see, if you, right above the cursor, uh, the six parking spaces in there, uh -huh. it's on the, the right three spaces, and it extends down to that ADA space you see oh, where the cursor's at right now. So it's right in the middle of, of all oh, those parking okay. spaces. Uh, so so <coughs> when it comes to, to overall site layout and where that building could even go uh, physically, there's really only a couple spaces. One is, is as it's shown right now. Another would be further uh, up on the screen, which would be to the to the east, but that puts it even more uh, close, closer to the right of way or the alleyway there. And the other location would be uh, to the left of the screen, uh, which uh, or of those uh, those six parking spaces, which puts it closer to the the primary drive aisle that services the gas pumps, and that creates a site circulation issue. So, so you have this property. They've got kind of more this tri triangle there yeah. with that yeah. on the south side. That's really kind of the workable area. Was there any thoughts of moving or like moving the um, or maybe you couldn't the, where we have the the garbage dump. That little building right there. Is that, I mean, you're, so you're saying if we were to push the building closer to where that dumpster or uh, move enclosure that would be? Dumpster area over further south, you know. To, I mean, I'm just, sure. I mean, I don't want to read the sure. signs. If, if you put, do. I mean, as, as it stands right now, so this building is roughly 22 by 40 or 22 by 44. So it's an incredibly small footprint building. There's very few buildings out there smaller than this. This is the new t Tim Hortons. That's building. correct. Okay. That's correct. Very few buildings out there that are smaller than this, for, for especially for, for a use like this. And so you can see, even with a building this small, how much of an impact and, and, and what we have to do to make the site work. So if this building is located any further to the east, which is up on the screen you're mm -hmm. looking at, uh, just makes the issue that we're, we're, we're here today uh, even worse. Right. In other words, we would need to utilize that alleyway for five, six, seven uh, of those stacking spaces. So the location of the building, mm -hmm. trying to keep it as close to, to Woodward Avenue as possible, is trying to re reduce any type of, of conflict and r minimize the use of the alleyway. Um, and, and again, uh, maybe to hit up on it, uh, again, uh, Mr. Reddy, your, your point of, was anything else uh, evaluated for use of the site? Uh, you know, I, I just mentioned it that uh, this building is almost as small as it gets, right? 20 by, by 40, it's under a thousand square feet. So any other use, uh, if you were to go with a bigger building, um, then you for sure would be impacting uh, or infringing upon the underground storage system. Uh, in addition to that, uh, it would require even more parking spaces than what, you know, the four spaces that are allocated <coughs> for uh, the Tim Hortons. So, so we would be seeking a, an even larger variance on, you know, from a parking perspective. And again, the, the depth, uh, the usable depth of this parcel, not including the alleyway, is about 100 feet, if you're talking perpendicular to, to the right-of-way. Uh, so there's not a whole lot uh, of use that you could actually do other than a, a small footprint building like this. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, yeah, Mr. Moore, sir. So a lot of uh, effort went into talking about the um, 
cruise traffic or congregating. What, I guess, makes you think that they won't still come here and use the space? Because I mean, in the pictures, it looks like they're, you know, by the pumps, they're in, you know, every space they still can be in. I mean, you're still going to have some parking here and, you know, it's not exactly a prime coffee time when the cruise traffic is out there. So mm -hmm. um, do you have any other like measures that you're putting in place to block off spots or I mean, is this, is there more to this solution? Yeah. Uh, <coughs> well, first, let me answer that. But I, I tied into that is I, there's one little postscript to one of the questions you asked, which was Mr. Reddy, which was, did you look at not having a drive through? And we did, except if you stop and think about it, that would remain then the attractive nuisance. We would have, we would have attracted people to come and park and stand and stay there instead of moving on. And that was one of the concerns about why we wanted to do a drive-through. Now, that's tied into to your question. Yes, we are going to continue to work with the police department on some measures. We believe now, for them to try and replicate what they were doing before they will be blocking cars from getting in and out of that drive-through the, the way they've done this. And that would allow the police then to write tickets and tow cars. And we, we're, we we're giving them that permission through what's called a power of attorney, which a business can do uh, in any location actually in the city to prevent people from improper activity. So um, we believe, and again, this is with the consultation talking with the, the the Royal Oak Police Department, that having something separate there, a separate business, a separate function of the business, will dissuade them from coming. Because what they're looking at is that big open space that's over there, and that kind of gives them a center for people to come into. Um, you know, I can't predict what people with idle minds and, and you know, <laughs> fast cars are going to want to do. Um, but we, we think that this uh, will go a long ways towards doing that because we're cutting down on that space. And even for them to come in and park, it's kind of a, you know, kind of got to do a few gyrations. It's just not simply pull in, park, and let's party uh, and, and raise havoc and, and chaos. So um, we're, we're going to continue to work with the police department, but uh, they and we agree that this is going to go a long way towards getting rid of this problem at this site. Okay, and one follow-up question to that. Did I understand correctly that blocking a drive-through, is that more of a ticketed offense than yes. just being in a spot, so yes. that's the difference? Yes. Okay, thanks. Yeah, because you're impeding traffic on a site. Yes, Okay. absolutely. Thanks. Other questions? Mr. Wolf. So, um, Mr. Cowan, first and foremost, thank you so much for, for coming in front of us tonight. Um, so I just want to say I live next to the other Tim Hortons on 11 Mile, and I can say that um, the one thing that kind of notices me as I see you driving through from my kitchen table is the people that have, I can't tell where the people that have, um, their mobile orders or not. So I guess that's a long way of asking if I have a mobile order and I'm going to this Tim Hortons, where am I parking? Where am I going through the drive through? How does that work? You can do both. You can go through the drive through. And you, when you get to the when you get to the menu board, you can just say I'm picking up order, you know, whatever your name is, and they'll give it to you. Or you can pull into one of those parking spaces um, and walk over and get your order at the at the window. We think what some people are going to do um, is they're going to go and gas up, and they're going to walk across and get their order. That's what they're going to do. That's part of what you know. That's the convenience and where we think what you'll that will be the interplay between people who are using the gas service and the and the uh, coffee service. And is there an opportunity or, or let me rephrase, is there a um, set time limit, like 15 minutes or whatever, that you have to be in that parking spot? Um, will it be marked, you know, for a limitation of parking? No, they probably won't if, um, because really we, we think the time frame is going to be very short. The average time at a at a uh, published time that uh, through studies that a Tim Hortons has at a drive through is three and a half minutes, but that's a full service. This is a very this is going to be what's known as a limited service. So I think it's going to be less than that, two minutes or under. 
and most of the people, again, people traveling on Woodward, they're going to work or going somewhere in the morning or in the evening, we think they're gonna move uh, fairly quickly. So it's not gonna be a long wait. But, but and most people who make the mobile orders, they generally jump in and get their order and leave. You know, I, I mean, we've all been at different places and they're in and out pretty fast, but it's just the convenience of having it ready for them. And so um, I guess, then the the police or whoever would, would, went and said, you know, it's not worth painting it, you know, that green on the curb or whatever the color is for, again, 15 minutes, whatever that number is. They just. Well, th I think what we're going to do is is work with that as it as the thing develops, and if that becomes a problem, then yeah, we post it, and then they could use that as another uh, another reason. But that's a possibility. It's a, actually a good suggestion. I like that. Uh, the the next question I have is, and this is the, um, what is the definition of after hours? Is there uh, going to be a? What, is oh, it, you mean in terms of the the the, the gas uh, being the whole? Yeah, the the facility. Okay. Well, the the Tim Hortons is only going to be open until about eight. Five to nine. Five to nine. Okay. Five to nine. Yeah, five to nine. So the gas the gas trucks basically come in, in a lot of gas stations they come in like after ten o'clock. And then they, uh, the, the the tanker trucks come in and do the uh, refueling, and so the the shell is not 24 hours then. No. Okay. Sure. Um, okay. So and then I guess, what um, are there any future proposals for expansion of the building? Is there gonna I obviously know you're not asking for another um, another building or another use right now, but is that on the radar? No. No, so this no, is they, it. They, they, when they built that building, that was the, the way they placed it was that was going to be the building. And really, there's no room because you got parking spaces and then you got the fuel uh, operations. So no, there's no no need to do any building expansion. And then my last question is why this concept? What 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 made you think like this this kind of concept is good here? Can't you come up, come up. I want one of the owners to tell you because they're the ones that made <laughs> no the problem. Good evening, guys. Um, one of the biggest things I used to go to uh, in the morning was the Tim Hortons in Birmingham, and I'd go there every single day and realize, what if I need to leave? There's no escape lane in that in that Tim Hortons. It was crazy, but everyone asks for great coffee, and that was one of our biggest reasons: is just having coffee in the morning. No one. I mean, we sell. We oh, we will in the morning, literally put up four different types of coffee and fill it with just a half a pot, and we're spilling more than three quarters of it in the evening. We just don't sell it, but we'll have people walk in with their Starbucks and with their Tim Hortons every single day, so <coughs> it just made sense to put a Tim Hortons there. No, that, that's not the question I asked. The question I asked was why this drive-through only? Um, it just made sense from the standpoint of coming in as a convenience and rolling through and leaving. Is that more what you're looking for? No, I, I guess uh, just to go back to Mr. Cowan's um, beginning, he was the one saying, um, you know, that there's, this is like one of few in the country that's only this drive-through. That's well, that's because the concept just started. They, they only okay, unveiled that's this the question I'm trying to ask. in 2022. And every, it's been in the planning process. And then, of course, if you get a franchise, they'll have to be a franchisee just like the big big ones. Yeah. And they have to go through a process to get approved to be a franchisee. They've had that approval now. And what they're looking at, then they you know, have to get the building approved. Uh, there's a big process on the other side that the city doesn't see. And then... Uh, this is the the end result of 650 square foot. It was really they don't need a full service because they have food inside. They have all kind of food items and convenience items inside, so they really don't need the full service food like sometimes you get at a sandwiches and everything at uh, a Tim Hortons. They just needed the coffee service and the donuts because that's what most of their customers were telling them they were looking for. So it's been a little bit customer driven. A lot of the customers were saying. Can you get a better coffee than just, you know, Cadillac coffee? Not to take anything from Cadillac yeah. coffee, but that's really what, what was driving it. Okay, that answered my question. So, so what you're saying then is that's your missing link, for lack of a better term. Yeah, they've always okay. wanted to have a national coffee brand, yeah. Okay, that's it. Thanks. Right. And one thing I forgot to mention, if I could, just real quick, it's attached. we got great neighborhood support. The neighbors, this is their 
par you know, party store, convenience store. A lot of people walk in to get whatever their needs are for their home or for an event in their neighborhood. And uh, we got 43 signatures. The vast majority of those are from people on Hunter and Chester, and they have been very, very supportive of this effort. So we hope you also take that into consideration. A lot of times you get neighbors who come out and are against the project. And I, I don't think we're going to have any of that, but, but certainly we have a lot of support. All right. Any other questions for the petitioner? Going once, twice. All right. As you know, we're down to board members. After a public hearing, I'll ask if you want us to proceed. You can either tell us to adjourn to next month or go ahead forward. So I'll let you. I'm just the attorney. Okay. I'll let you discuss with your go client. For it. <coughs> My client has great faith in the seven remaining members of well, the Sony Board I'll, I'll of double check. <laughs> I'll double check after the public hearing. Okay, probably. double check. Yeah. No problem. Okay. All right. Uh, is there anyone to speak on this uh, uh, variance request? You may come forward. Yes, sir. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Leon Ochoa. I live at 3722 Hunter, very close proximity to Barrel and Vines. Um, love the store. They got a lot of good stuff. I have no problem with the store at all. <coughs> Pardon me. The problem I have that's been happening within the past few years is the hot rodders or the, what I can't call them what I call them, but anyway, um, they're out there all the time. They're all running, running down our street and um, creating a lot of havoc. Uh, late into the night. The thing that uh, we see is that they'll make the turn out of the alley going north onto Hunter going east, which is not a 90 degree turn. That's a very tight turn. And if you have cars on both sides, I mean, I, I'm afraid to park my car in front of my house for fear of coming out in the morning and seeing I got, got hit by a hit and run driver. And we've seen that a couple of times already. So. That, not, that necessarily, not necessarily being the whole case, what I really like to see, and it would seem to be very simple, or there's actually two options, like you have the option here going on to Chester for the, the escape lane to have that part of the alley curved in, which we, we, I would request to have it curved toward Woodward. So my, my request is just to have traffic funneled from northbound alley to the westbound Hunter onto Woodward and leave the east side alone. There, we have a lot of little kids out there. There's a park at the end of the end of the block yeah, where the kids play soccer, they play baseball, and they're run. They're you know kids. They don't look when they're running across the street. And, you, and you've got to go th down that area like at 10 miles an hour. And even 10 miles an hour is too fast. But um, these guys, these guys, hot rodders are just flying down there. We've seen it a thousand times. You know, we've got door, ring doorbell video foot, footage of it. Um, the other thing that would be a lot less expensive and maybe as well, I don't know how well some of these drivers read, but if we can just put a no right turn or a left turn only sign at the end of the north uh, alley <coughs> so that they can see the sign, the sign big enough and they can say, oh, I can't go right, I have to go left. And that, that clears up traffic on, on the east side of Hunter. That's my issue. I've got no problem with the, with the the company. They're great. They're great people, you know. But um, you know, this this is the only option, the only issue that we have right now. No. Okay. Thank you. All right. Questions or do I get questions? No. Okay. Thank you. Any other uh, comments? Going once, and twice, three times. All right. Uh, do you still wish us to go forward? All right. We'll bring it back to this side of the board. Discussion and or motion. Who wants to take the first crack? Mr. Reddy. Um, I, I'm not sure I'm going to feel the same way on all three, so I thought I'll just uh, move that we grant variance A okay. to start. Go ahead. Is there a second? Mr. Clatt? All right. Okay. Um, so I think uh, currently I've gone, uh, you know, this is, you know, just sort of ad hoc, but it, there's always been more spaces. Right now, according to the calculations, there should be four um, spaces extra. Whenever I've gone, there's been many more than four extra. So I think maybe the calculation is a bit off. Um, and, you know, they got dinged by the rounding a little. I think it was closer to three than four that was counted. So, you know, we could take that down a little bit. And 
there's really good public transit on Woodward, which I don't think people are going to take the bus to get a cup of coffee, but uh, employees could take the bus and that would reduce the parking demand somewhat. So um, I feel that, um, you know, as far as going through the, uh, the criteria here, um, for item A, I think that the Trapper's restrictions are unreasonable in this regard. I think the, the calculation <coughs> is just a little bit off. And um, this would be a permitted purpose of serving coffee. Um, B, that the variance would do substantial justice to the applicant as well as to other property owners in the district and a lesser relaxation uh, would not give substantial relief to the owner of the property. And I, I think that's true. No matter what the use is, it's going to require some parking. So um, that the plight of the landowner is due to unique circumstances of the property. I think that comes up uh, due to the uh, Dream Cruise and its uh, location. And uh, D, that the alleged hardship has not been created by a person presently having an interest. In. They didn't create the Dream Cruise. So um, that's why I think we should approve. Okay. Hey. Mr. Clatt, do you have... As I said earlier, even though we can't count those tall parking spaces, they are parking spaces. We all know that. So that's my justification. All right. Any other comments? Go ahead, Nancy. No, because that means I'll be in favor of this also um, for some other reasons, too, is that there's some peculiar, different kinds of unique things to this property because of the storage tanks and the det detention tank underneath. And that changes that. And also, I totally agree with the part, there are parking spots that people are using as parking by the gas pumps. I mean, people are going to fill up with gas, they're going to run inside the store, they'll run over to get their cup of coffee. So that really kind of nullifies that kind of world problem of four parking spots. So I see it. Right. Also, the, un the unique part, the shape of the property, too, because you got this parallelogram, you got to get it fit that stuff in. So, all right. Any other comments? All right. Well, I too will be in favor of this. I think this is a very unique circumstance, um, in that uh, usually properties along Woodward don't have enough parking, and they are pleading to get more park, uh, to have lessons of it. In this case, you had a lot that had lots of parking, and now they're trying to lessen <laughs> the amount of parking because of the problems that came with all that parking. Uh, and the unique solution that they came up, I think, is pretty good because you have a similar type apparatus that you have food right there with the, the fuel. Um, and as you all know, when it comes to places to eat or whatnot, if there's not a parking spot or something for me to go to, but I'm sorry, I'm moving on to the next place. So in all reality, they're only, if it doesn't work out, it's only hurting themselves. But I think in this case, it's going to be a nice balance that, they, that they'll have uh, and everything that's been stated. So I have no problem with uh, supporting this uh, variance as requested. All right. And uh, seeing no other comments, we'll move forward with a vote on this. For just approving A, waiving 12 of the minimum required 39 off-street parking spaces. All those in favor signify by saying aye and raise your hands. Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. That motion carries. Is there someone for the... Mr. Clatt? I'll make a motion to approve uh, variants B and C as well. Okay. Is there a second? <coughs> Mr. Moore. Go ahead, Mr. Clatt. No, I appreciate you reaching out to the neighbors. There's a significant amount of signatures and support here, so thank you. I agree. I think that's a great idea to have a left turn out, but we're not, we don't have the authority to approve that here. But that is, that is a great idea, sir. Thank you for that. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I visit the site quite a bit. It's always well-maintained, well-operated, and I can only imagine this would be a first-class establishment, too. And you know, looking at the site, I, I think this is a good creative use that complements it well. There's, I mean, there's no way a full-size Tim Hortons could work here. And looking at a 60 to 70 foot deep retail building, that's not going to work either with that irregular shape and the fact we can't park it. So I think this is a good use that really balances it out well. So you mentioned before, parking's not an issue. Uh, I, don't, I don't feel the escape lane's an issue due to the quick turnover of the parking, or I'm sorry, yes, the, it's pretty quick service. So if you're stuck in that lane, you're going to get out in no time. I don't see that being an issue here. It cuts down the cruisers, which seems to be a problem. You know, I guess even regardless of the storm water, I think the building's in the right spot. So again, those are, that's my justification. Mr. Moore? Nothing else. All right. Other comments? Mr. Wolf. 
There we go. Um, yeah, I also will be voting yes. Um, I think um, having looked at the at the, I'll be honest. The first time I looked at this, I was like, "What are they asking for?" But then when I read your letter, uh, Mr. Cowan, I I then understood. Uh, I understood why you were asking for what you were asking, and um, I counted at least four different places where cars could escape um, as need be. So. I, I definitely don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with where you move the building. I thought about, uh, while you were talking, maybe moving it up toward the, the north there, but that makes sense. Um, this is more a question for Mr. Klatt, um, but I would have been in favor of having kind of a left turn only late. I, do you know why? Again, I, more curiosity if we don't have jurisdiction to, to ask for that. Yeah, I, just, I don't think that's... Our authority to we can't okay. we can't grant that. <clears throat> okay, we're no, just simply here to support either approve or deny the variances. And I, it's from my understanding. Okay, you know, that makes sense. Uh, just uh, that was also kind of curious more than anything. Um, but I I do like how you guys are really trying to get cars in and out of there. Um, and as long as there isn't another Starbucks, I'm cool with it. Mr. Reddy. I'm, I'm torn uh, because there's clearly a practical difficulty here and the sort of excess uh, parking capacity is, a, is an issue. I'm just not sure that, uh, you know, as I kind of mentioned with, the, with my questions, that um, it wouldn't have been possible to come up with a solution either by landscaping, by having a different type of business like the ghost kitchens that have come to us. and. To, to say that the only solution is to put a drive-through in the public right-of-way seems a little bit much. Uh, but there is a problem, so I, I do, I do uh, empathize with that. Um, the, only, the other issue I have is that the petition said that the, the undersigned support um, building a Tim Hortons on the petitioner's property, and uh, it, the petition itself didn't really mention giving up the public right of way. So I don't know, again, if the, if the neighbors were aware um, that, that that was part of it. So yeah, I guess I'm, I'm still thinking about it, but th those are my reservations. Uh, I, I think the escape lane issue is not really too much of an issue because like people have mentioned, there's several places to escape. Mr. Um, I will be in favor, and I just want to just briefly say thank you for this. This was very enlightening. I had no idea. Okay. Mrs. Grant. Um, I'm also going to be in favor of this. Um, I think the design does a really good job of making it so that the stacking does not go out onto Woodward, which is... We've already discussed other coffee places along Woodward have that issue, and I think it's better to block up an alleyway than Woodward, um, personally. I know it's not as good for the bikers, but I do think, as far as traffic is concerned, um, this is a much better design for that, so I'm in favor of it. All right. Mr. Reddy again? I th just to respond, though, I mean, the question isn't, does it have to block Woodward? Does it have to block an alley? Like, does it have to be a drive-through at all? It seems like there are other solutions that wouldn't involve putting a drive-through in the alley, but that's... Other comments? All right. I, too, will be in favor of the, this motion. Again, uh, it's a very unique circumstance. In this case, had you not known that uh, it was considered an alley for that property before this uh, uh, proposal came up, just going to that site, you'd never really realize that was an alley just because of how well of a site it is maintained. You just think it would be just an extension of the current gas station. So I think the uniqueness there is the fact it's not like the other buildings along Woodward where you can clearly identify that's an alleyway. This seems more of an extension and uh, sort of a shared usage that is good for the public as well as uh, the private use. So I, I, I don't mind what they're doing at all regarding that and um, how they've done the, the escape route lane through there I think is 
acceptable uh, for the issues, especially with how fast a turnaround there should be. Um, so I, I, I don't have an issue with that because planning didn't have an issue with it. So uh, I, I'm perfectly fine too. So with that, we'll move to vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye and raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> All right. Motion carries. Thank you. Best of luck to you. Well, thank you. And even though I know uh, our neighbor brought up the issue, we're definitely going to talk about the sign and uh, that site plan issue, but we can, we can accommodate that. So thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to case number 24-01-02, whenever you are ready, take it away. Thank you very much. Uh, the subject site is a corner lot, which is located at the northwest corner of Mount Vernon Boulevard and North Main Street. And it is located within the one family large lot residential zoning district. The, petitioner, the petitioner is proposing to convert the existing attached garage from accessory floor area and converting it into uh, habitable space. And then in addition to that, they want to uh, construct a second story addition on top of the garage as well to kind of square off the building, which too will create additional living space as well. So if you look at their approved or at their site plan that they proposed, their, their proposed modifications to the house will not be expanding the overall footprint of the house itself. Uh, the petitioner has also proposed to construct a new detached garage at the rear of the property, which does in fact meet all zoning ordinance requirements. Now the zoning ordinance establishes both a minimum front yard setback as well as a maximum front yard setback. And the maximum front yard setback can be no more than 50 feet. The house right now in its current uh, configuration maintains a non-conforming 76 foot front yard setback. And that's measured from the, as a perpendicular line from the front lot line to the closest point of living space, which would be here behind the front, uh, unenclosed front porch. Now the conversion of the garage plus the second floor addition will result in a reduced front yard setback to 67 feet. Uh, and the reason for that is because the garage would become the new closest point of living space. So the alteration and addition does bring the house closer into compliance, uh, but it's still going to be non-conforming. So the petitioner first needs a variance to alter slash expand a non-conforming structure in a non-conforming manner. And then the second variance to waive the 17 feet from the maximum allowable 50 foot front yard setback. Thank you. All right, any questions for staff? All right, seeing none, the petitioner may come forward and present <coughs> your case. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Mike Javiaris from Michael George Construction and Architecture. Um, so the purpose of the renovation project at, at its core is, is the homeowner has a mother that's become disabled and she requires 100% um, care. So um, we thought that the best solution to, to getting to that would be to convert the existing um, garage in a, a, a full barrier free um, accessibility bathroom, bedroom and her own living space. In doing so, the homeowner has lost his garage and his living space. So we provided uh, a detached garage in the back of the property um, as, to, as a separate um, drive. And we have provided a second story addition to <coughs> give him his living space that he, that he lost. Now the mother, um, is, is going to require 24 care. So there will be somebody there um, that will be with her. That's why she needs that much space. So in an effort to not disrupt the, the, the balance of, his, of his, um, his home, we thought this was the, the, the best solution to, to get her to that, uh, that ADA space. So um, no changes to the footprint. We're using the same materials as far as siding. Um, matching the stone um, and adding windows all in similar characters, the existing house. Um, 
pretty straightforward solution. Okay. Is there any questions for the petitioner? Mr. Wolf. Um, first of all, thank you for coming out here. The, the question I wanted to ask is who, the, of the 24 hour care, where are they going to be parking? So there, there's currently, so we have van accessibility actually adjacent to where the, the ramp is. So um, that's going to be her, her direct accessibility. Um, additionally, there's a, there's a circle driveway in the front that will also provide parking as well. So. Okay. So you're saying then that there'll be no additional, um, I want to say no additional cars, but I, there'll be no additional parking that's needed on the right of way no, on the public no. street. No, it's just the son that lives there and the mother obviously doesn't drive. So it'll just, it'll just be the caretaker that will have a, a, an additional vehicle. Okay, great. Any other questions? All right. Uh, as you know, we're down to board members, so I don't know if there's going to be anyone to speak, but <laughs> after the public speak, I'll ask if you'd like us to go forward or wait till next month. Yeah, go forward. Okay. <laughs> if you want to. Uh, anyone here to speak on this matter? Once? Twice? Three times? All right. Yeah. Still go forward, right? Yeah, okay, absolutely. Okay, no problem. We'll bring it to the side of the board. Any uh, discussion and or motions? Who's going to speak? Mr. Clatt. I'll make a motion to approve. All right. Is there a second? Oh, thank you. Ms. Robinson? Go ahead, Mr. Clatt. Uh, I agree with the applicant. This is a pretty simple condition, simple non-conforming condition here. It looks like he's making the non-compliancy better by creating living conditions. So we're making that better already. And I guess in theory, he could probably build a second floor addition on stilts closer, <laughs> which could be pretty unattractive. So again, this is pretty straightforward in my book. Uh, non-conforming condition. The applicant didn't create this. I'm sure the house was already there when he, by the time he purchased it. So that's that. I agree. All right. Agree. Any other additional comments? I, I saw this. The reason I'm the reason I'm going to vote in support of this is that if you go three houses down on 208, that's pretty much identical to what they're asking for. So there is precedent on the street. Anyone else? All right, I too will be in favor of this. It's pretty, pretty straightforward that this is a very unique uh, property and that uh, it's set back so far beyond the normal things. That uh, the, even if he just went right above it, it'd still be fine because it would look out of place coming more yeah. closer. <coughs> I agree with that. Um, so I have no problem. Yes, Ms. Well, I, I, I'll just go through and oh. say that this Thank chapter's restrictions um, on reasonably prevent, we're not really changing anything from where the house has already been, um, that the variance would do substance, uh, substantial justice to the applicant as well as the other property owners in the district. Um, that's again, we haven't really changed anything. It's just how the house has been built. But the plight of the owners due to the unique circumstances of the property, it's already like that. It's already there. It totally fits in with the neighborhood as it is. And that, that you didn't create this. It, it is the way it is. It's when that's how far the house is set back. So that was a pre existing scenario. All right. So we'll move to vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion carries unanimously. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Nice job on the new facilities. I haven't been to the Planning Commission in a few years here, so love it. You guys did a great job with the renovations. Thank you. Good night. All right. Good night. Good night. We'll move on to other business, the 2023 annual report. Yep, the 2023 <coughs> annual report has been provided to you. It's there simply for informational purposes. Uh, there's no action for the board to take on this item, but if you have any questions, Joseph and I can answer them. Right. Does anyone have any questions regarding the report? If not, we can always ask you behind the scenes or something too. <laughs> But uh, other than there's a lot less fence variances now that they <laughs> change things. <laughs> we don't have 10 anymore. <laughs> 10 to 12. 10 a our, month. Yeah. All righty. Uh, there's nothing else. Then we'll go on to general public comment. Is there anyone here to speak? If not, forever hold your peace. <laughs> All right. They're holding their peace. All right. Uh, the mystery motion. Who wants to make it? I say it's Mr. Wolf since it is his first 
One. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Uh, uh, second. Mr. Reddy. <laughs> all right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. All right, motion carries. Yeah, yeah. We're out of here.